Here, the Seth Williams Show with Chris Aiken. I'm on the CMS Network, CMS TV, the Seth Williams Show.com. Go there and leave your comments as well. Yeah. Because uh, it will be banned on YouTube at some point very soon. How fun was that? It was good, man. I like that guy. Yeah, he's great. Dude, you, you're you going to have a good time out there at that show. I might even come out to that one. I don't know. We'll see what my arm's yeah. doing. But <laughs> yeah, I got to go check that one out. That one's going to be a fun one. Well, obviously, we have the hookup. <laughs> I hope so. Well, considering both guys invited us out, and one guy offered us to, you know, come back and hang and drink. I know. So, um, yeah, that, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a party right there. Hell yeah! Can't wait. Was it two months from now? I, yeah, I might give up the uh, no drinking thing for that uh, for one day. Evening. Yes. I, <laughs> <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Ah, well, one day. Come one on. One day is not gonna do it. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that. Just drink a lot of water the next day. Yeah, well, in between, I'll just drink a lot of everything. Yeah, well, there you go. Drink a lot of water now. Drink a lot of beer that night. Then drink a lot more water later. Yeah, I mean, how can I go to a show like that, hang out with the rock stars, and not have a couple of beverages? Yeah. Do you guys have any rice cakes here? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll bring my own Subway sub, and then yeah. I'll have myself the beverages. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, good times with him, man. Good, yeah, good thanks stuff. Thanks for those guys coming on. Saliva and drowning pool this week. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Getting better guests. Yep. Robin Swoboda next week. Don't That's forget right. Robin Swoboda next Wednesday. She'll be on Cleveland Icon. Uh, wonderful person. So um, she'll be on Robin Swoboda Wednesday. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. Just and because who knows, I, who knows what'll happen Monday? We'll have somebody Monday. We'll get something going. I am looking forward to t- to asking Robin Swoboda, and and this is going to sound like the craziest, dumbest question, but I have to ask her. I, I know you don't listen to religious music at all, but I did. I used to. But, well, right. when she when she was on the fish ninety five five the fish I don't even know if that's still a station or not. That's but. one of the stations I work for. Yes. Oh, is it okay? Well, yeah, when she on. was when she was on the fish, and forgive me, people of WHK land, for saying this, but they that was right when that band Mercy Me had that song. I can only imagine. Okay. It was like their hit, and. My my ex was big into that station, and I mean, I must have heard that song <laughs> seventy five times a day. I, I mean, I still know the words to it. I haven't listened to it in ten years, and I still know the words to that stupid song because it's like the only religious song I know. But I want to ask her about why they played that song so much. Because oh my god, was it tough? Because radio plays every song way too much. This I was, was a Jars of Clay fan back in the day. Oh, I like Jars of Clay. They were okay. And I, I like that band Plum. Remember Plum? Yes, yes, yes. I remember them too. I, I mean, I, I actually, when I had my magazine, Music's Bottom Line, I used to interview a lot of the Christian bands. But I know. interviewed uh, the guy from Skillet. Oh, Skillet? Yeah, they're solid. They're pretty good. All right, uh, we got Tony Masashi on the, the uh, Okay. I think. We'll, we'll see. We got his chairs. His chairs are there, so we'll see where he's at. Tony Masaccio. Hi, how are you? We are good. How are you? You look like you're fantastic. You look like you're on a patio. I am on a patio. I'm actually at the Touch of Italy, which is in Bedford Heights. We've been here before. I was supposed to be in Monroe Falls at a moonshine distillery. Yes, you've heard me right. A moonshine distillery that opened up it's illegal now they are actually distilling bourbons and whiskeys right here near akron unfortunately it didn't work out but we will be there i think at the end of august so i was driving through the hood i couldn't even find a place today i figured you know what touch of italy will always take me in but i almost ended up at like a little gas station in the hood Interviewing <laughs> Abdul and his hot dogs and euros. <laughs> so, so I'm here live in the patio, and as you can see, it is a beautiful patio. Seats over 300 people. Wow. This was the old Gears and Cheers next to Southeast Har- Harley Davidson, right here in Bedford Heights. And I got to tell you, I'm sitting in this patio. And the clouds are coming through right now. It's been raining, as you know, the past week, like hail and rain. And the umbrellas are moving here. The trees are moving. My meal in front of me is going to be moving. Yeah, there is a uh, thunderstorm warning out for our area, so be heads and my up. Ass, and, my ass is, and my ass is right underneath it. I feel like Ziggy with a black cloud over it. So, what do you have uh, to eat? You, 
So, of course, I got a table full. I've got their famous cheeseburger, which is only $6.95. I've got chicken wings, lasagna. It is to die for. This is so funny. It is crazy windy. And I also have their famous salad. You can add a protein, whether it be shrimp, shrimp, or chicken to it. It's only $10.95. What a great value. Wow. Guys, it is getting crazier. I'm going to get through this broadcast now. The wind is actually picking up, as you can see. The tents are flying. The chairs are coming out. Actually, I'm going in. All right, I'm going Tony. in, guys. So hold on. Stay there. <laughs> It's this ugly is, this, It looks like it's supposed to start getting uh, pretty... Uh, welcome to radio. Welcome to live radio, right? <laughs> Tony's internet is works this, best in storms. That's what, yes. Is this is this wonderful? This is... <laughs> wait, I got... Hold on, guys. I got to get my man hat. I don't want it to fly out to the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, real quick... Um, you guys were talking about rock bands. I'm gonna really gonna make you jealous here. When I was 18 years old, so 1979, they had the World Series of Rock at the Cleveland Stadium, and the headliner was the Rolling Stones. Wow! That concert ticket, and again, Tom Petty was there. Uh, there were other opening. Uh, Foghat was there. There were probably about seven bands. At that time, they filled the entire stadium. The ticket then, I believe, was only nineteen dollars. Wow! My first concert was, which was at the Coliseum, was thirteen dollars, and it was Alice Cooper. And then I went to another t uh, concert at the Coliseum, which was The Who and Little Richard. It was twelve dollars. It was the first concert I ever went to. Wow, guys, wow. is that insane? That's I'm just crazy. amazed how fast your food got in there. <laughs> that was really quick. I, I got it in quick, yes. <laughs> so, did it, it did the tornado blow it in there, Tony, or what? <laughs> yeah, that was fast. <laughs> I made sure nothing got hot. This is funny. It's starting to rain right now, guys. So what I a timing. A rumor, I heard a rumor, Tony. Uh, the other day, you and I were uh, judges at the uh, rib cook-off out in Bedford. Yes, and that was I heard, fun. Yeah. I heard that uh, Carmen Angel is still driving around looking for it. <laughs> this is a funny story. This has happened to us. Every year we've done this for the last five years. Yeah. Right. It starts at 6.30, and Carmen is calling us at quarter after six. Where is it at? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's you bad. Know, yeah, yeah. I, on his behalf, though, this actually was at the Guardians game. He had to do a pre-postseason, uh, pre actually, the Guardians game. No, pre-show um, of the Guardians game. So we didn't get there until 730. But we did take but we did take care of them. Actually, hold on. They're actually bringing down. This is really cool. Uh. As you can see behind me, they're bringing down the garage doors <laughs> and they're making this thing airtight now because the storm is coming in. I'm looking for Toto and Auntie Amp. <laughs> <laughs> this is wow. great. You got to love live, live radio. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, so, at least your internet's working, so we're happy. My, in my internet is working great. You got that right. <laughs> Guys, this is cool. So anyways, back to the rib burn off. There were five ribbers there. Usually there were only three in downtown Bedford. And Mr. T's always won. So this year it was a new candidate that came in, and it was called Goodfellas, which is located in Richmond Heights. Okay. They don't even specialize in ribs. They had great ribs. Although none of them really kicked our ass, right, Seth? I mean, they were good. They were good. Sauce was okay. The flavor was okay. But we didn't walk out in there and say, this is the rib that I want, or this is the rib that I recommend. But, but I mean, I didn't taste, I tasted, I think, one that I would not recommend, but the other ones were, were pretty good ribs, so. Yeah, they were. They were good. Now, the, the Miz's dad was there. The Miz, who's yes, a wrestler. Yes, yes. And that is his dad was there, and I want to get him on this show to talk to him about everything, too. You will get him. I will make sure that happens. And wouldn't it be cool if you got the wrestler? Because, That'd again, be he's too. from Cleveland. He's a 
actually hometown guy talked about Cleveland, you know, on his show. Actually, Harry from Harry Steakhouse was, they never said his name, but he was on that reality show as a few cameos, oh, that's which cool. is really cool. Yeah. I'll so, tell you a good story about, uh, about Harry from Harry Steakhouse. Uh, we were walking out of the rib cookoff on, on that Friday, and we were going to go do our thing, and everybody else was going out to dinner or whatever, but we were just getting to our car, and I saw Harry walking back from, I think, the restroom or somewhere, and he saw me, took my hand, and he saw my daughter, Molly, and I introduced her to, him to, to Molly, and he just sat there, and he gave her a big, huge hug and said, what a oh, nice, that's... it was so nice to meet her, and I thought that was so sweet of Harry, because Harry's like, Harry's a tough nut to crack sometimes. And yeah, he he's is. He's quiet guy. And so the fact that he gave Molly a big hug, I just thought was so cool. And I just love Harry. I, I, he's just one yeah. of the greatest people. He really is cool. cool. Um, you know what? And he, he's been there for 20 years. That used to be the old Brown Derby. Here's a guy who actually started. He came here from Greece. Did not even speak English. Goes fast forward. He goes to Kent State. Actually, he went to start. One of his roommates was Greg Bradman, who's on WTM eleven hundred. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Obviously, you know that and that was um, you know it was a great place for broadcasting. So I took a broadcasting class at Kent State. I was there for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then did they kick you out or did you leave? No, I kind of left. I was. Uh, I was selling like a lot of, you know, we're on the internet and all these people are dead now, but I was selling marijuana and I got caught with a large amount. And uh, so before that, I was selling joints in the dorms and I was the weed man. I can say that now. <laughs> and now you're the food man. So and now I'm the food man. It's like a before so you know and what? after. It's a before yeah. and after. Yeah, you, you, you know what? Really eat a little. <laughs> I, you know what? I might as well tell this story because it was Jimmy Demore that helped me get out of this. So I was 28 years old. I had bought a new boat in Lake Erie, a twin engine Sea Ray, which was about forty nine thousand dollars. I had motorcycles. I had two MGBs, which is a British sports car. I was my front was I was in the waterbed industry. So I was selling water built beds and I ended up being in the wholesale industry that so my parents thought I was very successful in the furniture industry. Until I got caught with a large amount and my dad got me out of jail in three hours. So I the cops were surrounding my car. I this is a true story. I had guns to my head and when you're scared, you pee your pants. <laughs> I peed my pants. It's a true story. You really wow. do pee your pants. Wow. So, you know what? I can say this. I can say this now. I'm 62 years old because it happened. And the cops and the detectives and the judges are all dead. My dad paid my way out in the judges' chambers with envelopes of cash. <laughs> wow. I, I said that I, I can write a book, guys, but all my friends will go to jail. I got to change their names. <laughs> So, I always say that I paid my way out before OJ did. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what a great stuff. So, great, yeah, great, great story. Welcome, welcome to podcast. And, yep, I've got a few, and, and I've got a few more. You know me, I love telling my stories. Yep. Um, but again, guys, um, Seth, that was a lot of fun, though, at Downtown Bedford. Oh, yeah, it was great, great time. Which, oh, yeah. again, we will be invited and we have another event that I am going to get invited to. Chris, I'm going to make sure you're there, too. Okay. I'm um, not going to tell you what it is yet. It's actually in October, and it's going to be the Seth Williams Show. We're going to have our presence there, which nice. will be cool, because everybody knows Tony. That's right. Amen. Love it. Thanks, Tony. So, yeah, so real quick, um, <laughs> this, is, this is really crazy. So I was at Cerner's Saturday for my show, and it was Christmas in July. Yeah. So Brett Holy Crafts, which we've been in his restaurant a few times, had he had 55 gallon drums on the roof of Cerner's. There were five of them. Filled them up with Dawn dish soap, half water, and then the other end of the vacuum cleaner. He was blowing suds out onto Broadway and onto his parking lot. It was a hundred percent chance of snow, July. That July day on Saturday, 
They even had one of the Bedford Plows parked on the street. Nice. So <laughs> it was really it was really a great event. That's awesome. So great. so we had the Labatt girls there between three o'clock and five. It was a dollar a beer for Labatt's. And with okay. the empty Labatt cans, they made Christmas trees inside the bar. There were like cool. a ton of people there because they came from the river and off. And of course, they came to the function of the um, Christmas in July. So what I did is I bought nine cans of beer and I made a menorah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I love you guys. You I will totally. talk to you next week. I'm looking forward to talking to Robin Svoboda who I yep. met when I was in, in 1990, when I was on the Big Chuck and Little John show. So I'm looking forward to the surprise It'll of Cleveland's favorite mom, Tony Masaccio, reporting live in Bedford Heights at the Touch of Italy. Everybody knows Tony. I was going to say Flashpoint 1490 WERE, but the Seth Williams show, and you can listen to me every Saturday morning between 10 o'clock and 11 on 1490 and I am in a different eatery every Saturday. This Saturday, I'm going to be at Babe's, which is an independence, a great bakery, great lunch spot. Guys, I will talk to you next Wednesday. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, right, Tony. Tony. Uh, there we go. The food looked great, man. Yeah, it did. That was fantastic. Tony Tony dealing with a tornado sweeping in on him. <laughs> He's Jeez. got a tornado. He's talking about selling weed. I mean, it was just a, a hell of a uh, segment for that might have been Tony's best appearance ever. Got, yes. got weather, got got weed, got we, all this stuff all going on. <laughs> it is getting pitch black outside my house. Yeah, it's right getting now. a little dark here too. So, <laughs> all right, let's take a, a quick break, and then I want to ask you: Saturday is National Chicken Wing Day. All right. So I want to see what your favorites are. All right. You probably you be surprised. About the prices. Oh, you you I, you won't be surprised by that. All right. Hang on. All right. Hey, it's Seth. And I appreciate you watching today. And you can make a difference. For just $4.99 a month, you can help save someone's life today. It really does count. Every dollar matters. And you can change someone's life. Not these ridiculous dogs. Those are actor dogs. I'm talking about myself and Chris Aiken. I can barely afford a shave and a haircut. Or sleeves on a shirt sometimes. We could use your assistance today. Just go to the Odyssey app. Go to the Odyssey website. O D Y S E E. Just four ninety nine a month can change the world for someone today. Myself and Chris Aiken. We'll give you extra content. We'll give you bonus footage. We'll give you new episodes. Subscribe to the Odyssey channel today. Thank you. Hey, everybody. It's Don Dockin. When I'm feeling nostalgic, I always go to Pinball PA. You got to go check it out. It's a lot of fun. Stop what you're doing and start making memories at Pinball PA, located at 2284 Broadhead Road, Suite 10B in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. We have over 420 video games and pinball machines to play and all games are set to free play, so no quarters or tokens are needed. Pinball PA is open 6 days a week, and is the best and most affordable entertainment spot in all of Western Pennsylvania. Check out our website at www.pinballpa.com for more details. Come visit Pinball PA today. Initials up. Aaron Tees and Signs has become your complete one-stop sign shop. Call Jimmy at 216-299-9344. Their friendly and professional staff can and will help you build your company brand and identity from start to finish. One stop means you get a complete package from one location. Custom logo design, vehicle graphics, banners, t-shirts, storefront marquees, and so much more. Aaron Tees and Signs, 4883 Turney Road. Call us at 216-299-9344. 